Welcome everyone. I'm really happy to see you on this lovely Sunday evening. Uh, today is going to be yet another session for doing product at Company X. And right now we're going to talk about the product culture and generally like how does the entire product management organization work at Disco. I'm sure many of you guys have the chance to learn about how amazing the company is. And today, Disco's representative would be Mustafa Issa, who is actually an ex-colleague of mine back from Bad Construct. Issa has like a really, really big experience in product management, not only in our Armenian market, but also across the Europe. And yeah, I'm sure he's gonna tell you a lot about his career, how interesting it is, and how he kind of transformed uh, himself from a totally different organizational role into product management. So Isa Jam, the floor is yours um, and let's have fun guys. Thanks Raf Bardes Bonorin. I, my presentation today to you is going to be in English. I speak Armenian, I understand it, but to present to you this in the most proper way, I need to speak in English. Sorry for that, if it's bothering for anyone. Uh, yeah, thank you, Raf, so much. As I, I am really humbled by such lovely introduction. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, host to disabled participant screen sharing, Raf. Yes, oh, I'm just on my way of changing it. Awesome, you should be able to share now. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Cool. Do you guys see my presentation now? Awesome. So I am Isa, I'm lead uh, technical product manager at Disco. I have been product manager for almost the last six, seven years. I am a personal believer that everything around us is a product that is waiting to be managed and reached to achieve its goals. And I'll speak about that by the end of my presentation a lot. And uh, a little bit of a warning, I really do speak a lot. So be patient with me <laughs> to reach the end of that. Okay, so uh, I graduated in Egypt from German University as uh, an IT engineer, majored in telecommunications. Uh, started my career as an engineer, mainly Android developer, which is really funny. Changed my career a little bit to a sales engineer, became a sales manager, became head of sales, moved to Dubai, to start a new office for first front information technology in Dubai as a head of sales. Later on, I visited Armenia first time uh, with Isaac, where I was participating in FLAB Green project in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Liked Armenia so much. It was love from the first instant. My ex-girlfriend back then was Armenian. I had loads of Armenian friends. So I moved back, I went to Egypt to see my family and I decided at that time that, okay, I'm going to move back to Armenia. After uh, that, from uh, moving back to Armenia, I joined Birthright, Debbie Hike. I uh, participated in multiple projects with them, with Pink, with Nepak, etc. And then in a lovely job fair in Delijan, I joined Bed Construct. But back then I joined as a data analyst guy. From data analysis, I moved in Bet Construct to become an account manager. I wanted to join sales of Bet Construct, but I was suggested to become a product owner. Back then, I didn't know what is product, what is product owner, what is that person is supposed to do. But apparently, in my account management, like I believe that product is understanding the main thing is understanding your customer, being the voice of that customer moving forward. In account management, uh, when I started my career, I start uh, here in Armenia, I started with a lot of uh, like low performing uh, partners in Ghana, etc., Africa, because I'm from Egypt, obviously. So I started noticing what can be done to improve how they perform, what kind of payments we can integrate to help them. I came up with scratch cards. Let's provide them with scratch cards. It will be easier for people to, instead of going to a bank or using a credit card, because not that available over there, to use a scratch card to add money to their account and that. And uh, I used that methodology of understanding what the people need, understanding the pains and the gains of the product in my learning as my first role as a product owner at Bad Construct is a product called Fantasy Sports. 
it was a product from scratch. I had uh, a lovely development team, designers, etc. And we started working with them. Moving forward, I started taking more roles in Bet Construct or Vivaro, whatever you call it, from uh, Fantasy Sports, uh, working with platform, virtual betting, and then I got uh, an unrefutable job offer in Malta. At that time, I married uh, my lovely wife, Zax. We didn't do any celebration, anything, because I was moving in August uh, 2017. I was joining Betson Group. If you guys hear about it, it's one of the biggest gaming companies in Sweden. It is on Nasdaq. You can check it out. And we have a next slide with a lot of logos of multiple companies, which I worked through. And then I came to Armenia, had my wedding, and then moved with my wife over there to Betson. From Betson, I joined William Hill slash Mr. Green, again, as a gaming product manager. From gaming product manager, I became senior gaming product manager, then joined NetEnt Gaming. From NetEnt in Malta still, from NetEnt Gaming in Malta, I joined again the team in Stockholm, stayed in Stockholm for a little bit. And then when my wife was about to give birth to my kid, I decided, okay, it's time to move back to Armenia. And it's time to leave the gaming industry. I had like lovely five years with them and I wanted to experiment new industries. Uh, so I moved it to Armenia back again, joined the VMware as a senior technical product manager. From VMware, I had the pleasure after coming from US, I had the pleasure to join Disco. And since then I am with them almost a year now. I will speak about my role at this school and what we have accomplished together during this lovely Corona year, but uh, we will catch up to that soon. Okay. Uh, so these are a couple of logos of places that I work it for, but let me tell you a little bit about this school. Before speaking about products or what we achieved or anything, anything basically disco is an on-site platform we have b2b products we have b2c products we basically enable every marketing and insights professional in any type of business agencies banks finance uh, brands etc with uh, tools that power advanced analytics and improve their business performance and we will come to that in a bit this school mainly was founded in 2015 it is uh, headquartered in glendale california uh, we have office uh, in Glendale, that's the main office, Yerevan, Connecticut. We have a lot of colleagues from all across the US, uh, New York, etc. And uh, we are working, we always in this had the remote culture. Like you can work, uh, you can speak to your manager and work remotely anytime you want of the year because it's more convenient for you. And due to Corona, thankfully, it became way more than that. We became more convinced with that. Uh, in Armenia, the office was founded in 2018. We are expanding, we are hiring like crazy. And uh, when we reached to my uh, role at Disco and what we did with the Armenian office and the amount of revenues that we are generating now, you realize why we are having a lot of new products being built over there. Uh, and our growth has been noticed. So if you check uh, Deloitte 2020, we were one of the technology fast 500 uh, companies, which means that uh, our fiscal year growth over three uh, years period was one of the fastest. Uh, in Inc. 5000 in 2020, was, we were one of the fastest growing private companies, which means that on the last three years of average growth, we had average growth of 500%. Disco have grown more than four times in just the last three years, just for you to know. In the Los Angeles Business Journal, we were one of the 500 fast growing private companies 2020. And in the built in LA magazine, we were one of the top 50 best mid-sized companies to work for in Los Angeles. And trust me, that's part of our core. We don't have such uh, surveys or any uh, like uh, yeah surveys or gathering opinions here in armenia to understand best places to work but i can tell you right away it's one of the most fun competitive and amazing places to work over here and i have worked in multiple armenian companies okay moving forward okay so in this school, we, whether we are engineers, innovators, entrepreneurs, basically on a mission to transform this whole future of insights. We have uh, six main values. 
like team, trust, impact, innovation, growth, and transparency. Or as we call it in disco terms, like when it, we speak about team, we say, let's boogie together. If you guys are into dancing or rock, that's what we say over there. Let's boogie together. Trust, trust your own dance partner. Like we built this culture of trust is that every opinion is listened, heard, and dealt with. And that's why everyone is contributing to the success of the whole company, creating an impact, hustle with purpose. Uh, innovation, we create fresh moves, we move fast forward with it, we agree on it, and we start building. We all strive to growth and we enable as leaders. In my next slide, I will speak about uh, our leadership styles that we believe in DISCO, and we want to enable everyone to grow in their career. And transparency, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. There is nothing secret, even something like a board meeting. All the numbers are shared. We have dashboards that show the growth of the whole company, all our profits or our losses or our spendings, etc. Everything is public, shared across everyone in this group. You can go ahead and check uh, the performance of every single team, every uh, single part or department inside the, the company, how the company is doing our shares, etc. Second part, we believe in servant leadership. And this term was created or appeared by Robert uh, Greenleaf in 1970s, as he servant as a leader, which means that you serve others, you strive to, uh, to serve. There is no authority that someone put you, you are a manager of managers and then you gain authority. No, by serving people and by gaining that trust, it is an indirect authority. You earn authority, you earn it. You do not gain it by just being placed over there. And for servant leadership, there are multiple ways to look on it. Like there are five pillars of it. There are 10 principles, like model the way for others through the common goals and inspire a shared vision across everyone because everyone's opinion is heard. Challenge the process. Don't agree that the process, that's what we are going. No, challenge the process and always find better ways to do the work. Enable others to act, trust your teammates, trust everyone you work with, and encourage the heart. You need always to share the feedback, whether it's good, bad, support others. Or as I say in general, like uh, there are 10 principles for that, like listening, hearing everyone, because when you do listen, you can act later on. Don't keep speaking like me that much without hearing what others have to say. Empathy, always feel empathy towards everyone uh, you work with. Healing, you may have someone who is great, but he had like a bad experience, bad day, toxic company he worked for and he comes. It works miracles when you enable them to heal, to come to this new environment. Self-awareness, as you are leading others, you also need to be self-aware of your weaknesses and strengths so that you will be able to lead others and avoid your weaknesses or work on them. Persuasion, there is nothing like we are going to do this, go do this. There is a common values, common goals that you want to achieve with your team or the people you are leading and you need to persuade, you need the cons cons consent from them to do that. And that's not, that's earned again, as we say. Conceptualization, you need to understand where you are going, where your company is going. You need to see the bigger pictures. Don't enter into your bubble and that's it. And then the foresight, based on that, you can see the future. You can act on your mistakes. You can learn from them and you can work forward. Stewardship, don't just lead people, but be an example. So don't tell people, become, come early to meetings if you are not early yourself. Don't tell work harder if you are not working hard yourself. Be the examples that they are going to follow. Commitment to growth of people. We at DISCO, we are committed that people learn. I can tell you that uh, in my 30, 16, 90 plan, when I first joined DISCO, and you take it at your own pace. You can finish it in one week. You can finish it in the 90 days. We had books that you needed to read and to discuss with your manager to see if you got it. If you didn't, what you learned from it. We have book clubs, we have courses that we take, and we have a lot of programs coming ahead uh, and a lot of amazing initiatives, how to grow our talent into what they are doing. And of course, uh, more wider scope. And building community, it is trust, trust, trust. When you trust your dance partners, as we say, 
you have this com community of people who are dedicated to work. We are not uh, like uh, do this, do that. No, this is big community where everyone trusts each other and work on it. And these are not just words. You can take my word on that. Now let's go to a little bit more deeper. What does DISCO actually do? Why DISCO? By the way, the Q in DISCO stands for quality. We believe in dancing. We are fun people, so a DISCO. But the Q is the quality of the data and the quality of the services and products we provide to others. Uh, DISCO started with Survey Junkie. Survey Junkie is a panel where people join, register, sign up, and then they receive surveys and they earn points or money, basically, for filling that surveys, where their opinions are here due to brands, where their opinions are here due to agencies. So every opinion matter. And we call it our panel because we have really close relationship based on trust, experience, uh, empathy towards the data that we store about these people and what they do on the website and after they leave uh, the website. That's why this panel is our biggest uh, achievement, I would say. We have 18 million panelists and uh, some of those, and we are only at the moment operating in US and Canada and Australia, and we are expanding to new markets pretty soon. And uh, those panelists uh, from those 18 millions, almost uh, three or four million share their data with us, which means that uh, if they visit the website, we know that they visited that website. And we will come later to what other products are built on top of that. We have an audience API. A brand or a company wants to speak to our panel, wants to know their opinion about their brand or a new product that they are releasing or want to learn earlier on. So there is an API, they integrate against. Uh, there is a pidding on these projects, these projects reach and we find the right target audience based on the people they want to target in their surveys. That's one of our products. Second one, which I am leading, is called ad measurement. It is mainly measuring an impact of an ad. Let's say a company like Procter & Gamble, Tide, for example, having an advertisement, and they want to know if that advertisement is performing good or not. Is it performing good or not on Facebook? Is it performing good or not on Amazon? Is it performing good or not on our websites? So we go ahead and check from our panel, who are the people who have seen that advertisement? And who are the people who didn't see that advertisement who are similar to these people? A control group, if I may say. And then we measure the impact of the ad. After seeing the advertisement, what did they do? Did they visit my website? Did they buy my product? Did they buy a competitor product? What they have done exactly? And on every single level, like media partners, channels like Facebook, etc. Last product is data stream. Some companies like, uh, or some uh, banks, like Bank of America wants to know what is a trend. And we have 18 million users. They want to know what is the trend nowadays? Are people buying products or are people into more shopping activities or are people more into watching Hulu or uh, Netflix or something like that. They come to us and we provide them a stream of data, of course, without any private information, a, tool, a stream of data that they can check and analyze what is the trend nowadays. Moving from our products, we have 200 plus clients. Some of them are uh, from the Fortune 500, actually from Fortune 20 to 50. And I will share with you guys some logos of these companies like Procter & Gamble, Hulu, Kruger, Vevo, iHeartMedia, NCP Universal, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we have way more. Please visit disco.com and you will see way more than that. Uh, coming to the lovely topic, product management at Disco. What does that even mean? Bottom up, top down, sideway roadmaps, as we call it. So uh, by the start of every year, uh, every product manager meets with his team, gathers ideas. Everyone uh, starts voting his idea into the roadmap. Every single idea is cared for. We hear, we listen, we discuss. Product manager later on uh, starts filtering out uh, based on the bigger vision that we have for the company moving forward. Meeting with sales, meeting with delivery teams, and gathering a general opinion. Here is a roadmap. We go ahead and check our finance. We speak to finance, understand, okay, this amount of 
school who require like this amount of budget. We start debating with finance, the budget, we start going down again to the team, etc. what we can do over here, what we can eliminate. And we built a roadmap uh, together. Of course, stuff change. Uh, every month we pulse on what we do every week. We uh, pulse on our OKRs, which I will come later to discuss and what we do. But still, we have a common vision that we believe in that we want to reach. OKRs, objectives and key results. Again, this is top down, bottom up, sideways. The company comes with really ambitious objectives that they want to achieve, leadership team. These are our objectives for that year. And then it's up to us, uh, product management team, to decide, okay, in order to achieve these objectives, what are the key results that we consider that these objectives are achieved. Like, for example, if I say we want to add measurement to be the number one used product in the entire universe, that's very <laughs> ambitious uh, objective, right? Then the product management, okay, what are the key results that I can measure? So if I achieve these key results, I am going to be achieving that objective. Product discipline, product discipline, product discipline. Product is main customer, voice and we follow that directly in this group. product managers on the, not only the backlog we are not only product owners we own the vision the backlog the ROI calculations we do set that up depending of course on the level of the product manager which we will come to discuss in a little bit but if you speak about ownership and the full agile community that's literally disco hands up hands up so we do have this lovely career growth framework, and that's what counts for us all year long. Craft, community, results. And this craft and community and results differentiate, uh, uh, differ, sorry, differs between the different levels in product management. Every department, by the way, have that. Have the craft, community results, but tailored to their needs, like engineering management have that, data analytics have that, etc. Craft is your craft as a product uh, manager. Every level, like if you are a senior product manager, what is what are you expected to do? And how you are performing against that. Community, uh, what are you expected to achieve in terms of community and cross team uh, collaboration, et cetera, and uh, what you are doing to achieve that. In results, what are your results versus OKRs or versus, and we do have multiple other stuff inside results, community and craft, like for example, Part of uh, my community is giving public sp uh, speeches, giving lectures, giving trainings. That's something that uh, my career grows based on. So every quarter you come with your manager, you put your own assessment of how you are performing in craft community and results, your comments on every part of them and how you are performing against them versus what you expected or versus what is higher than expected from you. You give your assessment from one to five. Your manager puts his assessment one to five, and then you sit, sit together and discuss if you do not match why there is a mismatch over there, whether it is lower mismatch or a higher mismatch. You agree together on that, and then you start developing a career plan, how you can improve in these areas that you need improvement, or you are achieving amazingly. It is time for your promotion or it's time for you to go a little bit higher in the career grass stairs. It looks something like this. This is on a very high level. Every element here does have multiple levels. So product management intern, he has his own craft, community results, expectations, etc. up to VP of product management. Between every level and another, there is like three, four, five levels. Craft community, Results plus the years of experience that you have acquired across your work plus, etc. So in the product manager, you are supposed to become an SME, as an example, in your craft of the product. As a senior, as a product manager, you are not expected to be an SME. As a lead product manager, you are expected to lead the vision. As a product manager, you are supposed to participate or coordinate in the creating the vision, etc. Stuff like that. Now to my boring talk, something that I have been preaching for ages, and uh, I would love to speak with you guys about it. I believe that everything around us is a product. Product is not only digital software or websites or applications or services. Everything is a product. 
if you think about it, like a government is a product, uh, your personal life itself is a product. It goes something like as easy as that. You define your goals, what you want to achieve in general, like a very wide range goals. What is your target? Like uh, in government, for example, if I'm a ministry of health, what is my target? Am I supposed to cover everyone in the country under health insurance? Am I supposed to have more hospitals? Am I supposed to do that? Okay. Doing a value proposition. Okay. What is the pay, uh, gains that I'm going to gain? What can I do in order to improve that? What are the problems that I'm currently facing? What is my budget, etc.? And then just set a simple vision statement for that. Make a hypothesis, a lovely hypothesis about how you will achieve every part of that. Go to a roadmap, put a plan, iterate on it. Check if what you have done is actually valid or not. Is it providing the values that you anticipate it will provide or not? Most probably first time, second time it wouldn't. Go back, iterate, iterate, iterate till you figure it out normally. The same happens in your personal daily life. Like, do you want to grow in your career? Do you want to have a better personal relationships with others? Uh, do you want to, to become rich? Do you want to, to do this, do that? You need to understand what you want to do. What, what is your aim? What are your goals, for example, this year or this week or this two weeks? And I, I do that in my personal life. It may be extensive, but this year I want to grow from this position to this position. I go ahead and do an analysis. Okay, the people who are ha uh, having this position right now, what are they doing? What kind of accomplishments? Do they have academic accomplishments I don't have? Do they have something in craft community results that I do not have? How can I work on myself to do that? I craft a plan that I'm going, okay, and during these two weeks, I will learn that or I will do that during the next two weeks, a roadmap, if you may say. And then I put my statements, okay, if I do this, I'm expecting that. Here is the matrix that I'm going to measure my success based on. And I start doing that and see, did this land the results I wanted or not? If yes, move forward, continue with your plan. If not, went wrong, analyze, iterate, and find the next best thing. Uh, as of Disco Armenian News and Plans, we are hiring a lot in all aspects, uh, product management, uh, developers, uh, data analytics, etc. Uh, we are doubling our office space. If you guys do not know, we are in Tumu Center, uh, above PixArt, one floor. Uh, also, we contribute to uh, the society. Like we always want to have an impact. Uh, during the war and after the war, we helped 21 families from Artsakh to relocate. Uh, if we speak about non-Armenia office in Los Angeles, we were helping in YNCWA adopt the family project and uh, we adopt, we helped in adopting two families over there. We are planning workshops for veterans of war and uh, it is all uh, on voluntary basis. So our team members help a lot in teaching others who want to learn something, trying to create an impact in society we live in. And we are launching a lot of new products. Actually, Disco is restructuring. So in the past, we used to be like opinion portfolio, behavioral portfolio. Opinion, you, got, you guessed it right from the surveys. Behavioral portfolio is uh, by analyzing the data, measuring the ads, etc. Now we are going for customer facing products. We uh, have an application launched, we have an extension launched, and now we are launching a desktop application on Windows and next year we will be launching on Mac. Uh, and the other side, enterprise P2B products, we are launching two or three more products, most probably. So join us. Uh, there are a couple of links over here. Uh, we have a lot of openings. Uh, we love people. Uh, we hire basically talent more than uh, anything else we want people to join us uh, we are now in the analysis of an initiative that we are having to run some sort of internship uh, for product management nothing finalized yet but it is initiated and we will see where that goes and at the same time we do have uh, product management openings as of now i know this is not one hour but 
Thank you so much, guys. And we can jump rough to the questions whenever you are ready, buddy. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Isajan, for this lovely presentation. It was great. I wish there were people like you back then, like like five, six years ago in Armenia to have like conversations like this to people who were just starting doing product management. Uh, so uh, I, I know people are gonna have a lot of questions, but before we start a part, like the question part, uh, I had actually one question that I believe like the rest of the people would be very interested in, in this type of question. And the, and the question is the following. Uh, so how was your like transformation journey from your like previous role into product management? And what were the biggest challenges for you as a beginner product manager back then? Uh, that's a very old question. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, okay, it helped and it was hard at the same time. As account manager or uh, account uh, responsible person, you learn a lot about the pains, mainly pains, more than gains of your customers or your clients. So you want to help them. So you are aggressive. You don't have uh, this aggression moving forward as a product manager. So you are aggressive. You go to developers. We need to build this. We need to build that. At that time, we didn't have product owners or product managers or the culture of product management in Armenia in general, we had something similar. It was like a mix of product owner slash project manager type of thing. You negotiate having this stuff moving forward. The transformation for me, uh, the hardest part was basically how to work with development team, right? Like uh, how you will deal with them. You are not their manager, but at the same time, you have some sort of uh, non-formal authority of what is going on, how to gain their trust. That's the main part of a product manager, gaining the trust of your team. Trust is not something that you will force into them. They can listen to you. You can put anything in the roadmap, but nothing will be accomplished without this trust being created. And you will face it always throughout your career, guys, in product management, that trust, you, and trust is something continuous, as my manager always says. It's not something that you gain and that's it. It is continuous work on relationship, on how you work with others to build it. Also, I had a great help from an amazing uh, coach at that construct. Don't know if you guys heard of him or not. His name is Robert Kasparian, so shout out uh, to him. He is agile coach at Big Sart, if I'm not mistaken now. And he was a great help taking me through this career. Awesome. Does that answer your question? Right? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot. And we actually have a, like uh, a queue for questions already. And the first one is Raj Mohitaryan. Raj Jan. Thanks, Rafael Jan. Um, the most uh, thank I want to thank you firstly for the amazing presentation and. Uh, the most interesting part for me uh, uh, was like the career path you have uh, gone through. So uh, it was really interesting to me to know uh, the role you had in VMware. And especially I, I, I've noticed that uh, there was a like short period you have uh, stayed there. And what's, what, what was the reason? Uh, like to move from VMware because it is also a great company. So it is quite interesting to me. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raj. That's a great political question. But yeah, I was uh, a lead technical product manager at uh, VMware. Uh, I was working on the VR Ops product, which is mainly the management tool, which uh, manages your uh, infrastructure, virtual machines, etc., across the globe. Uh, I worked with one of my best friends over there, who's still working over there. VMware is definitely a great company. You get a lot to learn there, especially in cloud computing and that industry. Uh, but as a huge company, it comes with uh, downsides as well, right? Uh, so you don't get the passion or the eagerness to build new stuff, to innovate or to participate in something that's growing in bigger organizations. And that's a that's the regularity of things uh, like you have a startup you have a mid-sized company you have a large size company and you have a huge corporate so every step have its positive and negative it's amazing on the cv definitely amazing 
uh, great moving forward. You can learn a lot, but you get slower. The more the company scales up, that's a trap the companies go to. That's why you hear now a lot of buzzwords about mini startups. Let's divide every company into a mini startup here and there so that uh, you get this fast growing dynamics. That was mainly the reason why I decided to join this school. I found that uh, I will be more um, uh, like, I will have more impact over there basically than I will have in VMware. Uh, yeah, sorry for this type of question because I, I had my uh, like uh, uh, my own uh, reasons to to ask such kind of question. So uh, uh, another type of uh, like small question was it was the role uh, was connected like with tons of observability or it was something different. It was about observability. It was the main dashboard basically over there, revamping the dashboard, revamping the, the reports section of the other. Yeah, I see. I see. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your question, Raj. Uh, the next one would be Satanic. Uh, hello, uh, Isa, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very exciting to hear about your company and your career path. Uh, I actually have two questions. The first one is that, is the technical background uh, what you are usually looking for in product managers uh, and product manager candidates when hiring them? And also, uh, I would like to know about the product team, um, like how many people there are in the team? What, what roles do you have there? Uh, thank you. Of course. <laughs> thank you, Satanik, for your question. So uh, it depends on the company and how the company is organized, whether they need technical or not. I would say overall, in general, you need a little bit of technical understanding. You don't need to be deep technically involved because you wouldn't be able to. Uh, there are people whose uh, like, uh, full-time job is about being technical and building this stuff. So comes the trust part. Trust your teams, you will take the right decisions. You are not the one to do that. Uh, technical understanding helps you communicate easier uh, with the team. So reaching to a focal point, you will reach that point regardless, but helps you reach that point faster. I would say that by practicing and becoming a product manager for a period of time, even if you don't come from a technical background, you will acquire the technical understanding. I stand to be corrected here. But uh, yeah, it depends again on the organization. Some organizations uh, require, like in VMware, require uh, like literally, literal uh, technical background in order to work over the literal knowledge of their products. Some other organizations, you don't need that. In this school, uh, for some roles, we require technical background. So you will be able to, ease, like in senior roles and higher, we require that. At this school, I'm a lead product manager. In this school, we start with product management intern, associate product manager, product manager, senior product manager, lead product manager, director product manager, and then VP of product. Great, thank you. Thank you for your answer. And the product team question, like how many people do you usually work with like every day and the roles that you have there? Of course, uh, in my team, I, uh, uh, my personal team, like my development team, uh, consists of uh, uh, six software engineers, one data engineer. We are hiring four, so it's supposed to be uh, 11 by the end, of, not by the end, actually by now. We didn't yet manage to hire all the people. Uh, we have an uh, engineering manager who is uh, part in this call, I believe. Hi, George. Thank you for participating. Uh, he manages the engineering part and manages the team. Remember that product managers are not people managers. We manage by uh, non-formal authority, let's put it this way. Uh, rather than that, every product line which have more than four uh, developers have a product manager across uh, the board. We always hire that. Uh, I currently report uh, to our CTO as a founder, but uh, moving this year, I will be reporting to our VP of product, enterprise product. And uh, for the rest, it depends. Uh, in the opinion side or in the uh, B2C business that we are doing, we have a director of product which manages multiple other product managers, senior product managers, obviously. I'm the only lead so far in this group. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Awesome. Thanks a lot for your questions, Atanik Jan. And the next one would be Vicky. Go ahead, Vicky Jan. Marhaba, Isa. So apparently, as you see, uh, I'm from Syria. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, coming and meeting with us. Uh, and would like to add, if you guys, you and your wife, I don't know uh, if you guys have a lot of Arabic speaking friends. I miss speaking Arabic, so I like to meet someday uh, if that's okay. Um, I, my question is that I've noticed that the Egyptian, uh, um, that Egyptians mainly are a lot active in, on LinkedIn through Scrum and in the technical sphere, uh, which I didn't notice back when I used to be in Syria like 10 years ago. Um, not I, at, at the beginning of this presentation, my, uh, my internet was not very good. So I, it kind of broke and I didn't know that if you started working in the IT sphere back in Egypt or not, but uh, it seems that you've moved between Malta, uh, Stockholm, Egypt, Armenia. And my question is, here is more cultural wise. I mean, uh, I've got moving in my plans and I kind of worry about like working in the IT sphere in Armenia if it's very different in different places in other countries. Uh, what are the similarities? Are there a lot of differences in there? So that's my question. Uh, starting with uh, the Arabic part, uh, <laughs> we have uh, people in this school, like uh, from Syrian Armenians who speak Arabic. Unfortunately, my wife doesn't. No, speak no, Arabic. no. That would, would that wouldn't work because when Syrian Armenians meet, we will speak Armenian, so that wouldn't work. I miss the <laughs> Arabic. <laughs> we have George on the call. He's from Lebanon. George Stephen. Hi, George again. Hi, George. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, my wife doesn't speak uh, Arabic. She is Armenian from Yerevan. She doesn't speak Arabic at all. <laughs> so <laughs> that's another topic totally. Uh, as for the community, I started my career in IT in, back in Egypt. It is not as developed as it is in Armenia. Uh, mm. Forget about uh, all the buzzy and fuzziness word. Armenian IT is really growing super fast. The dedication mm work here i can compare for example uh, armenia versus malta armenia anytime armenia versus sweden here people may be lacking the years of experience of sweden but they uh, overcome that by working really way way harder and i mm. don't that. so armenia is like heaven for it companies i can say that i see it growing in armenia with everything else can go down but uh, mm. the IT sector in Armenia will definitely continue to grow. A lot more startups will start, uh, a lot of uh, more investments will happen in this sector. I remember the IT sector in Armenia where we used to be like very few people who really speak, uh, if Rafa can confirm my words, when we speak about agile and it was like a buzzword. What is agile? What are you speaking about? Why we need to do that? We are working. Just tell them to work on whatever you want to work on. Why are you, why you want that? I even remember that even my role at Bet Construct when I was product owner of platform, it was written Bet, like uh, head of platform, because there was no <laughs> direct translation of that in the culture. Now I can tell that uh, the companies are really growing in, at a fascinating rate. Like uh, I see that Armenian <laughs> and American culture of uh, IT development in general is pretty similar. We are learning a lot. Them and oh. we are growing on that track. We are not Europe style at all. We are more of an American style IT. I, that's what I can say easily. If, like if you say European style and American style, are they like, which one is better? Or there's no, nothing like called like, like better? better? It is more of a culture type of thing. How mm. do we work? How often do we work? Uh, how dedicated do we need uh, to be? How do we care? Like if you listen to Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, for example, and mm -hmm. I'm a fan of uh, them, not on a personal level, but on a work level, it's not about uh, uh, like uh, in Europe, it is all about uh, work-life balance, which is amazing, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, there is like uh, work-life balance, but from a different perspective. Like if you feel dedicated and you feel you're doing the right thing, balance your life, but the way you see it fit not by calculating everything, how to balance everything. That doesn't work for me. Mm. I prefer the American culture. It's more of dedication, more of let's get this doing. 
like if you think even about product managers there are multiple types of product managers i'm more of like an execution type of guy who prefers to mm. see stuff happening i love to work on a product we launched ad measurement this year by the way in uh, uh, disco armenia the uh, ad measurement mm -hmm. It immediately generated uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. It is uh, uh, expected to, to forecasted to be uh, basically generating millions uh, mm -hmm. next year, this year, 2021, obviously. We had immediately uh, 30 clients for ad measurement once we launched. So mm -hmm. I think that's really great. The company here is growing. That's why even our company sure. is putting more trust in Armenia growing the space, hiring more people because we're doing a really good job. That's what I would say. So we're not at the level of Europe in the US, but we're going there pretty much fast. Not about level, just we are lacking years of uh, practice, but we are going there really faster. Armenians in general are really creative and builders by nature. So growth here is really expected. If there is no more war, uh, good or bad, if there is no issue that's going to happen, if no more Corona, hopefully. So I think we, if we manage everything, if we manage the government as a roadmap, if we have a roadmap for every ministry in the government yeah. and we can keep track it and see the growth and see the matrix, most probably will go really places way faster than where they have reached. Just they started way earlier than us. That's all. Great. Thank you. And it seems that we've got an Arabic speaker among us here. Hasmik Jan will continue later on chatting through Slack. Awesome. The group is just like full of discoveries. Great. Yeah. Vicky Jan. And we'll pass to Anusha Kian. Anusha Jan, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. It was very inspiring. Um, uh, currently, I'm working as a project manager uh, with a mathematical background and I'm studying some programming languages such as uh, JavaScript and Python. And uh, I'm, uh, recently, I'm being asked uh, why I became project manager and I want to become product manager instead of being a um, programmer. So uh, as you have moved from programming background to product management, I want to ask, uh, what uh, do you like in uh, doing product management that was uh, missing in your software engineering position? So uh, what do you like the most? I can give you an example. Uh, when I, uh, for example, use any new application or go to the street and see something that is broken or something like that, I always find issues. I always envision how it would have been done in the, like what should have they done instead of doing that. I like to answer these questions. What are we building and why? Like, uh, for example, let's put a, uh, have a startup to uh, bring, I don't know what, to, to Armenia. But why? What is the value are you going to bring to do that? Why you are doing that? What actually are you trying to do? I always want to answer that question. When you are a developer, even if you think these questions, it's not part of your role or what you do. You always think like, how can I do that? How can I improve doing that? How faster I can learn new language or a new way? How can I search for an existing solution to do that? You care about the why to understand, but you don't care about envisioning what shall I do? Why going through all these phases of uh, research, understanding, uh, not only market research, understanding, even design research, understanding whom you are targeting, when you are targeting them, etc. That's why that's what I enjoy about product management. We we try to we try to solve problems. That's the whole thing. Try to find Thank problems. you very much. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and the next one would be RP. Hi. Thank you for um, sharing your journey with us. And uh, I would like to know what was your uh, failure that uh, you would like to share with us and uh, what you have uh, uh, gotten uh, from that uh, failure. Thank you. Sure. I had a lot of failures across <laughs> my life. 
basically. But yeah, as it is, uh, part of it interesting was my first role as a product owner. I didn't know uh, what I'm doing. I tried to build a product. I didn't have so much trust of the team. I was pushing everyone through deadlines. We built a product that does not exist. Um, Funny enough, like we presented that product at uh, an award ceremony and we won the best product of the year. But still, I would like uh, now I would never do it again in that way. I would build the product. I wouldn't promise to deliver something in three months where physically impossible for anyone to do that. I wouldn't get deadlines from anyone. I will put my own deadlines. I will envision the product, uh, what and why. That was my main failure, my first product. Concerning the deadline, you you want to share with us that uh, we have um, take very uh, carefully with uh, deadline estimation. Um, no, not like I that. It was not, it was not estimation. It was like a top down sort of thing. We need to build a product from scratch in three months. Can you do that or you cannot uh, do that? Without speaking with the team, without anything, I agreed uh, to the role. I started working with the team, pushing them, so that motivation and such stuff will help. It doesn't work that way. There are a lot of other stuff to do it. I didn't care about quality that much. I didn't do any research on design on, or what will sell, what will not. It was my own opinion. And uh, what I learned in my career in product management, opinion, your opinion doesn't matter at all. It really doesn't matter. It is data, it is a user's opinion who are going to buy your product from you. You may think that you are building the best product in the world if you don't do any, because it is your opinion. You as a customer will buy it. But for the majority whom you are trying to target, it is like bullshit. You do not want to buy this thing. That's why I never do that again, hopefully, in my career ever again. I need to take my time, need to speak to the team, need to work together. I'm not uh, a head of department. I am a product manager. I need to do product in a proper product way. And since then, that's what I did. Thank you very much. Um, great. Uh, Ana Muradjan, you're the next. Hello. Uh, thanks for the uh, insightful presentation. Um, I'm Anna. I work at Sixers as a product manager, and I believe we are friends on Facebook. <laughs> so maybe we can chat sometime. Um, I have uh, two questions to you. So um, because you work at one of the top companies in Armenia, I think most of the people would be interested to know um, what is the piece of advice. Uh, like, and the second question is because um, you presented how awesome it is to work at this call, I believe there also should be some challenges. So I'd like to hear about those as well. Thanks. Cool, sure. Thank you, Anna. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember you now. Cool. So ma mainly, uh, most important thing of DISCO is believing in the core values and uh, our core values and in the servant leadership type. We don't have managers there. That's the most important thing to keep in mind. We don't put manager in places. People earn their leadership. No matter who you are, even if you are the founder of the company, your words are going to be challenged because we, that's what we believe in. Opinions don't matter, data and uh, results and reality, that's what matters. Uh, challenging stuff in disco is mainly uh, we are hard workers. Everyone is hard worker around you. I can tell you that. Uh, time zone has been challenging during Corona times like crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had many uh, like late night calls. I think it is common in Armenia for multiple people to have that. While we also try to keep work life balance, like uh, our ops team, people ops team are pushing us like crazy to keep our work-life balance. I even was put on a sleep um, uh, improvement or something like that. <laughs> so that's the only thing. Other than that, uh, this is one of the best places I have worked for in my entire life, my entire career. And I'm not saying that because I'm uh, on a video recording or something. I would say that <laughs> every single time I will out any other company. Uh, how to join this co apply shows that you are motivated enough uh, to do the job, you are ready to do it, uh, you share our values, you have our passion, and that's it, that's all it takes. Of course, we have like very, uh, not long process, but we have multiple uh, layers of interviews, 
I can tell you. I know you it can be very tough to uh, join this course. So <laughs> there are a lot of requirements, especially like uh, I also um, always notice that it's like a technical background is needed. So I was wondering if a non-tech person can apply to that position. We will see this here. You don't need to be technical. You just need to have the technical knowledge, and yeah. you need to be able to speak that technical knowledge to the team. And it depends okay. on the position as well, because if you are on a senior level, you are expected to know mm -hmm. more than someone who is just starting his career. That's obvious. Right. And hopefully, hopefully we will have uh, opportunities soon for like uh, associate and product manager, etc. Because recently it was only senior lead, senior mm -hmm. lead. Senior yeah, lead, right. <laughs> senior lead director. We have been speaking about that for a while. And hopefully this year we'll see some initiatives around that from our ops team. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks a lot for your question, Anajan. And the next one will be Karapet. It's always pleasant to hear uh, when uh, someone with your positive attitude speaks. <laughs> okay, um, I've been working in Pixar uh, for about six months. So yeah, I witness uh, that uh, um, some people say that the processes in Disco are way more advanced than in Pixar and in many organizations in Armenia. So my question is, what makes uh, Disco so special from the process side? And methodology. Mm -hmm. So we believe, as I, uh, as I said before, uh, in our uh, literally pillars, our values, challenge the process. That's <laughs> the whole point. The process not working, learn from it. We take our retros really seriously. Every team retro, we analyze it. We realize what is not working. If we need a new process, we start working on a new one, etc. We have uh, something called our RFC process. If you want to suggest something, for example, to hold this coup, you can go ahead and open an RFC ticket on Jira, where everyone can contribute to this RFC, giving you comments, opinions, taking you from a discussion phase to like a moving forward phase to implementation phase if you got like a popular vote on that or something. Uh, we always change our processes to what suits our work. So I can tell you that at some certain point, uh, we decided in the team, we're going Scrum Ban for this month. Let's see how it works. It didn't work. Let's go back to Scrum. <laughs> Stuff like that. It is like uh, not experimentation, but it is mainly what suits you and the team the best. Not like process is not a Bible at the end of the day. You choose what you, what works for you. So can you say that you have different processes in different groups or uh, every manager uses the process suitable for them or I don't know. We do have common processes and we do have uh, different processes. So when it comes to incident management, for example, we have a common process for everyone. We try always using this RFC in order to come up with something that suits everyone. If it doesn't suit a team, the team will stop and say, okay, it doesn't suit me. I want to challenge it. Okay, what is the challenge points for this process for you? Here is one, two, three, four. Let's try to solve them. If they are not solvable, let's maintain another process that's going to work for us. As simple as that. Iterate, iterate, iterate till you find the right formula for you. We don't have like, uh, this is what you are going to use all the time. That's what is going to happen. There is nothing like that at Disco. Disco is all about being agile, flexible, and uh, maximum output. That's what we care about at the end of the day. And that's what we measure against. I would also add a security. I have tried sneaking in into your office like four times, going up with the rest of your stuff. But the lady with the glasses always catching me. And so. uh, if you enter the office, uh, everyone knows everyone. So if you enter the office, you'll definitely be noticed immediately if you didn't join. Any new person who joins. <laughs> is welcomed by every single person in Disco. Uh, we publish uh, like a bio about him, what he has been doing, what he is doing, uh, what he enjoys uh, watching or eating or hobbies. And everyone gets a chance to congratulate him and he meets most of the people that he will work with uh, during his 30, 60, 90 plan. So the probability that someone works at Disco and you do not know him is pretty much tiny. <laughs> 
Uh, what's the size of the staff right now in Armenia? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, 150 plus. I don't really remember. I stopped hunting because when we started hiring more and more and more. I really have no statistics on such number. I did my presentation really late. To, <laughs> didn't give the chance for the ops team to provide me with such number, but yeah. <laughs> okay, <coughs> thank you very much. Anytime. Thanks a lot, Karapa Jan and uh, Asrik Jan. The floor is yours. Oh, uh, it's me or? It's uh, Asrik, I believe. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for your inspiring talk. Uh, it was really awesome, and uh, I had really interest uh, in this call uh, and applying for a PM or project manager position. So uh, my question is the following, uh, like we always talk about soft skills that product managers need to have to succeed in their role, like leadership, empowering their teams. Uh, but are there any uh, soft skills that um, product managers in this call uh, need uh, to succeed in their role, like they are must for them? Uh, I heard hardworking and maybe night owl lifestyle would be nice, uh, but um, if uh, there are any, <laughs> please mention. And my second question is regarding a working day of a product manager in Disco. Like, for example, tomorrow you as a product manager, what would be your first uh, job to do and what does a working day of yours uh, generally look like? Sure, of course. Uh, hard working is something that this school team does on their own. Let me be clear on that. So it is not something that is required from anyone. There are pe everyone works on his own pace. We care more about the outcome. We don't care about the hours or when or such stuff. Trust me on that. That's like the main thing. Uh, most important thing in this school uh, is these core values, a team player, commitment and empathy. I would say like uh, strive to grasp, our core values, that's what we really believe in. I can tell that by heart because I just won uh, the team value award <laughs> this year by popular vote across Disco. So I can tell you team, 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 team till the last uh, part of my breath that I can speak. But yeah, team, commitment, strive to grasp, uh, creating an impact. Uh, every person is different. So every person contribute with something on, that he is good at. We care about being a group, like uh, a team. At the end of the day, all of this school, not this the team, not that team. Of course, we negotiate a lot. We work a lot uh, together. Everyone has his own roadmap, has his own thoughts, etc. But we start uh, negotiating, we start working. But at the end of the day, we are all working towards a similar goal, our objectives. At the end of the day, that's what we care about. Uh, what was the second question? Sorry, Astrid. The second question was about your working day as a product manager. What does it look like? Cool. It, it, it differs, really. It differs. Uh, so, uh, usually, if I am needed, I don't usually participate in stand-ups because it's not needed from a project manager to participate. I do participate, but it's not that needed. Uh, my main ceremony that I need to attend with the team is uh, grooming and sprint planning. Those I must attend at any time and the retro. I do attend the retro even if it is not that mandatory to do that. Uh, I do have other multiple uh, meetings with cross-functional team, with sales. I do have a weekly uh, meeting with leadership team about my own product. Uh, there are multiple meetings like OKR pulsing meeting where we pulse where we are with our OKRs, what we have achieved on that. Uh, etc. We do have a monthly business review where every product line shows what they have done during this month, what was the goal of the month, what we did versus that goal of the month. We do have monthly product kickoff with all the product managers setting and like, let's kick off the month, here are our dependencies, that's what we are going uh, to work on. We have a CTO daily stand-up, uh, oh, uh, he is also the founder, so uh, some people who report to him from product management uh, or engineering management or across the company, I report to him. So I'm part of that meeting where we meet with him to uh, just a daily stand up, 15 minutes to speak about our day, what we have done and what we are planning to do. If there is anything uh, else to do, what else? Uh, we do have a roadmap review every uh, one month with the team. 
uh, we do have a portfolio planning or mainly like uh, checking uh, how we are pulsing against our OKRs again every two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. What else do I have? <laughs> it's interesting. Plus uh, my daily work, like researching, checking what people have been doing in the industry, checking uh, new tools that I can use, products that uh, do exist, what I can improve here or uh, there, coming up with an idea and discussing it with multiple stakeholders to see does it fit is it going to be the next big thing or not really uh, <laughs> uh, i meet with uh, people ops on a bi-weekly basis to discuss what can we do to improve employees job in armenia like our health our pulsing how it is we do have something that we report on the end of every week called high five i don't know if you guys saw that tool before uh, where you like every manager asks his people like uh, how you are feeling are you feeling good what have you accomplished this week what some certain questions just to pulse how you are doing how you are feeling uh, about the work how you are performing against your OKRs again just to see and comments to raise anything that arises that uh, does not exist as of now like uh, if you face something and you want to raise it like a very big problem or something we do have the tools and processes for everything so you have people ops who are always supportive and there for you they will pulse on you every here and then uh, they have the employee score so you uh, basically receive surveys to speak about what do you like at disco what you do not like at disco what you like about your manager what you do not like uh, about your manager what are areas of improvement do you like our insurance program do you like our benefits program what can we do to improve because every Every, again, every department in Desco cares a lot about the well-being of the talent uh, that we invest in at Desco. I participate as much as I can. That uh, Also, we have uh, Jalapeno uh, every Friday where uh, two or three team members speak about something, any topic of their choice that uh, affects the whole company, like a new product release, a feature that everyone needs to know about, or just uh, any topic, really. Uh, and we have taku uh, calls, but this is in US, which is the same as jalapeno in Armenia. It is taco bells in the US. These are most of the stuff that I can remember now out of my head. And a lot of meetings we need, like with CS team, a lot of uh, bugs reported, issues. Someone wants something, someone wants this to be developed, someone is telling we want to do this, we want to do that, etc. Like normal. <laughs> yeah. Great, so lots of communication and really inspiring team building ceremonies. I really uh, appreciate it. Team building, I forgot it. We have a lot of team building activities. Usually we go out, drink and dance, but in Corona, we just go to Tumu Park and sit over there and speak together. But yeah. <laughs> Great, thanks a lot for your response. Anytime. Sergey John, you're the next. Oh, hello to everyone, uh, Sajan. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, uh, my question is the following: uh, What is your main market for uh, your products that you have? And uh, depends on the product, uh, depend on the market and countries that you are working with. Uh, do you change the approach of the product, or you work with the same approach? Uh, okay, that's all. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sergey. Merci, So, at the moment, uh, okay. At the moment, what we are doing? At the moment, we are mainly targeting U.S., Canada, and Australia. So, uh, the market uh, target itself is not that different because our audience are mainly from these markets, mostly from the U.S. And all the companies that we are uh, working with, like whether agencies, publishers, brands, are over there. Uh, this year and next year, we are expanding. My product line itself wouldn't be affected uh, this year, most probably next year, when we expand to start targeting different category of people or different mentality or different stuff like that. At the moment we don't have that. We do that, but on different levels. So now you are speaking only about the market, the country. We do that on age, parental state, uh, gender, uh, what else? A lot of other stuff like superior side visitation, branded side visitation stuff like the attitude and the behavior of the people of the panel. That's how we do the target audience type of thing. And again, based on campaign in ad measurement, based on campaign by campaign. 
like uh, we had a campaign for Victoria's Secret. It was uh, mainly girls 18 to 24 and moms 18 to 24. That's it. So you target these people. But for us, we are, at the moment, we are only in uh, this market. We will expand. Once we expand next year, we will see the other product lines, how they shift towards that. One of our challenges this year, hopefully. Okay, nice. Thank you very much. Hope to have a cup of tea with you, Sajan. So we'll be in touch with you. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, Hasmik Jan, you will be the next. Issa, thank you very much for the insightful talk. What I'll personally take from it um, is uh, the part to treat our lives uh, and everything around us as products. I think it will uh, put very much responsibility on us and will be the only responsible person for our success and failure from both discovery and delivery parts. Um, I would ask you to give us three advices to a person that makes a career change towards product management or a beginner product manager. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I would tell you that the most important thing in the product manager is being the customer voice, understanding the product. So any company that you will enter, no matter the industry, you need to learn that product by heart. Knowing who are your target audience, what is your market, what people you are targeting, what they are missing. Does that product exist already in the market and you have already competitors who are showing some stuff or you are building something totally from scratch and you are trying a hypothesis to see if it's going to work uh, or not. That's the main thought process whenever you shift there. What to do as a product manager, there is no like, uh, how to say, outline for what people need to do, what course to take or what to study. Like, th there is a Rafa's great course, there is ACSPO from Scrum Alliance. There are a lot of certificates around there, but it's all about practice. Once you get into the role of product management, applying what you have learned through this time with the knowledge that how to treat a product then you become a product manager courses will give you a very great head start we didn't have in our times basically but uh, practice uh, the fights the negotiation the understanding the embassy leading a product in general that's where you start the actual progress towards your career it's an amazing job to do trust me on that but it requires uh, time, practice, etc. And you go really fast in it, the more you put into it. But yeah. Great. Uh, Mari Minasian, go ahead. Um, hello, everyone. Nice for your time sharing with us and the opportunity to talk to IT person, <laughs> representative. I have a question as I'm going to transfer from mining sphere to IT sphere soon. I'd like to know if there is any internship program in this call or if you have got any on job training. Thank you, Marijan. So at the moment, we do not have any internships in this school. We are thinking there was an initiative that we submitted about doing that this year, but uh, we are measuring it now uh, against other items in all our roadmaps to see if we are going to do it or not. Definitely, we will do it one day. We really don't know yet when that will land, but we want to do that because we believe that Armenia needs uh, a new generation of product managers that to get to get that practice and to learn uh, from it and move forward in the careers with it because product management sector in Armenia, I can tell you is really, at the moment, really tiny. Uh, so please follow uh, Disco, all the links that I have uh, shared. Uh, whenever it appears, you will hear about it. We are really loud everywhere on the media, so you'll definitely hear about that. Thank you for that. Great. Karabajan, you have one more question, I guess. Yes, thank you, Rafael Jan. Uh, I've noticed that you and Rafael, all and out of the senior level uh, product manager, have some good public speaking skills. Is this something you like born with, you, or you went to some trainings, uh, or this is something that you came through the experience? 
any tips you can share with us or something will help us to make us better in this <laughs> yeah, let's try to answer that thank you for that uh, of course there is a little bit uh, of every part you have mentioned to it uh, you are not fully born with it uh, i was a horrible speaker back then i still was able to speak but uh, not that much so mainly it is by practice by getting rid of uh, doing repeatedly uh, anything in the world and make that talent stronger by trying it that's what i believe personally and anything that you try i didn't take any courses about public speaking just practicing 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 and learning and listening to my managers or listening to people i work with about the problems i had i can share with you for example that i always had the problem of not listening in meetings i didn't know how to control me started working on that, how to time box the meetings without offending anyone, how to work to arrange the meetings so everyone gets a chance to speak, etc. So it's like that. <laughs> so I am any, any tips? Okay. Any tips for the beginners? I am in practice. Speak a lot. <laughs> I have to tell you, just speak a lot. <laughs> Whenever you get a chance, try it. Okay, thank you very much. Try to network with as much people as possible and try to just introduce yourself to them and start conversations. Uh, ask them like for a cup of coffee or tea and just like kind of try to force yourself to talk a lot. Yeah, I, I basically had the same issues uh, as like Essa has described like a couple of minutes ago. And it just takes like continuous practice. That's it. Like nothing magical. Uh, I haven't personally, like, uh, I haven't like taken any course or any like specific program to improve to help like this. It usually takes up dedication. And I'm sure you guys will, will manage to actually improve those skills all the time. Uh, I had to mute someone because of the voice. Uh, guys, do you have any more questions? Okay. Uh, as I see, there are no more questions. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Isel one more time for this wonderful presentation, for the speech, and for all this like uh, dedication in this program, Isa has been very supportive throughout this entire period of time. And we had like continuous discussions regarding the product management education in Armenia. And I'm sure uh, his speech was like motivational for you guys. If you guys have any questions regarding like product management or doing product management in, at Disco specifically, feel free to contact Isa via LinkedIn, Facebook. I'm sure he's gonna be very responsive and very helpful and Isajan, one more time. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. And yeah, let's keep in touch. Thank you, guys. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye.